Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, first of all, let me thank the Islamic World Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, and particularly Director General Dr. Salim Al Malik and his team for the kind invitation and the opportunity to deliver this message. I would have loved to be with you in Rabat, but some uh, previous commitment prevented me from uh, joining you in, uh, in person. But at least as a thank to technology, at least I can, uh, let's say, share some, uh, uh, some ideas and some uh, reflection on the, on the important topic that is going to be discussed in the, in the coming hours. Um, the organization I represent, namely the International Center for Sport Security, ICSS, has a role, but then also it's a foundation, Save the Dream, um, an initiative born 10 years ago to build a more fair and inclusive society for sport and the power of its values can just support the goals of this uh, important forum on women in sport. Historically, there have been uh, many challenges regarding women participation in sport at all latitudes and contexts. When women were not allowed to fully compete at the Olympics, we recall that Alice uh, Mia staged in Paris in 1922, the almost now gender pay gaps and poor media coverage. Moreover, the number of women in sport governing bodies remains below the 30%. Female representation of national Olympic committees has fallen actually in the last years, a fall of 1% up to 16% in certain cases. And female representation on international sport delegation has remained static and close to 18%. Only tennis recorded a significant increase in the percentage of female board members. So increasing women participation in decision-making bodies and processes of sport delegation is not just uh, important in terms of protecting women's rights or opportunities, but it also means uh, increasing the level of integrity in the world of sport at large. In fact, as I highlighted by several studies, women are less vulnerable to the appeal of corruption compared to, uh, compared to men. Women continue, are and continue to be key players, um, without any doubt, with regard to sport for development and peace. Uh, most of the let's say, key players in, in this field are uh, women, at least in our, in our experience as an organization. With other young women at the time of the female national football team of Palestine, I think about Katarina Salta, that uh, she's using football in Greece to integrate uh, uh, women's refugees from Syria. About Norma Bastidas from Mexico, who broke the world record for the longest ever triathlon covering almost 4,000 miles to raise awareness about human trafficking, the same crime that had stolen years of her freedom, of her life, and taken her from Mexico to Japan as a young victim of human, human trafficking. At the ISSS, at Save the Dream, we, we had the privilege, we had the privilege to work with these sport for peace activists and to witness their amazing achievements and capacity to have an impact in the most vulnerable groups and underserved communities. Together we have been working to protect the right to play of girls in Darfur, in India, in Haiti, in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, and in these days, as we speak, in Somalia, particularly in the state of Punta. However, while women have been able to make an enormous difference on the ground, at the community level, we need to make sure that women can also have equal opportunities as sport administrators and in key decision-making positions. We must protect their right to play also a central role in policy, in policy making. This is part of our collective responsibility, how to protect those who are advocating for women's rights in sport life in society, because this has become a very dangerous job. And this forum can be the opportunity to develop a common agenda also in this realm. So thank you once again to the organizer for the opportunity to be part of this event and give our contribution to such an important cause. Thank you so much for, for your attention. Thank you so much.